Well, our marine survey is in, and I'm going to tell you what it did and didn't find. The good, the bad, and the unknown. <laughs> Now, before I get into all the details of our marine survey on our new to us 1998 Sea Ray 370 Sundancer, I just want to mention again that this is the fourth installment in my series about how we bought that boat sight unseen and everything that we've done and will be doing to get that boat home, find out all about it, and make it our own. So, yes, here we go. Not one, but two piles of paper. This uh, entire report from our marine surveyor totaled 58 pages and there's a lot of insight to be gleaned out of this whole entire report. Now as many of you know uh, this boat, our new to us, new Boogaboo, our Sea Ray, is the sixth Sea Ray, the sixth Sea Ray that we've owned and the third of this vintage. So I am very familiar with the boat, the systems, its construction, how everything works and how, how everything breaks and the let's say the weak points of those boats so there was no real huge surprises that jumped out on me uh, jumped out for me on this report but there was a couple of things that um, i would not have known given the fact again we bought this boat sight unseen i have yet to lay eyes on the boat i hope to do that very very soon um, again just back up a little bit we are in ontario canada and the boat is in ohio in the good old usa so um, it's a bit of a jaunt to get there and the COVID restrictions and all that other crap. So we have been relying heavily on both our broker. Look at the last video in the series, told you all about using a broker and the great experience that we had with those folks, as well as our surveyor. And this was another pleasant, pleasant surprise dealing with this gentleman here. Now, before I go any farther, I just want to make mention and a big, huge shout out to Brian Schrock Marine Surveying. He is a surveyor that we dealt with on this. And I'm going to give you a little bit more insight on the, that process uh, with dealing with a surveyor. Um, but first, I'll, I just want to tell you um, the short strokes of what we found on this marine survey and the reason why a marine survey is not the only thing you want to get on your boat if you're buying, if you're looking to buy a used boat. Or even a new boat for that matter. Our first Sea Ray was a 1976 240 Sundancer and I had to get a survey for insurance purposes and I just want to mention that as well. Um, you will need in most cases um, insurance companies especially on an older boat like I said this boat's a 98 so it's 24 years old real time this is end of February 2022 when I'm filming this. So the boat's 24 years old and most marine insurance companies insurance companies will not put a, will not write a policy if the boat is more than 10 years old unless it comes with a survey because a survey is not only going to tell you about the construction of the boat and its seaworthiness but it will also provide a valuation so that the insurance company can come to an agreement with you when it comes to insuring that boat so when we had our 240 surveyed i remember the surveyor and i was still new at this because this was only our it was our third boat, but the only second boat that we had that was on the water and that was worth actually insuring. And I was surprised a little bit taken back when the insurer, uh, sorry, the, uh, the uh, surveyor just wandered around the boat somewhat quickly. And I said, do you not even want to get down the engine room and fire up the, the engine or anything like that? And he goes, no. And he wandered over the helm and he hit the horn button and went beep, beep. He goes, well, that works. He says, that's your mechanical survey. So again, I was like, whatever. I don't care. I, you know, I already knew the boat and I was familiar with that boat at that time. Um, but I was, I was surprised that he didn't want to investigate farther. So subsequent to that, we had similar experiences on a couple of boats where the surveyor was just kind of there to get his money and leave. That was my impression anyways, where I had to follow up with pointed questions about the boat, uh, to get a reply as well as have, as well as have those questions asked and or sorry answered in the marine or sorry the survey report so dealing with brian on this one he is by far the best surveyor that we have dealt with in all the years and all the boats that we've had and probably the best survey that i have seen the best written survey that i've seen because not only does it talks uh, not only does he talk about you know specifics on the boat 
but we'll give one the less initiated a little bit of background talks about definitions of terms that are used and stuff like that and i guess that's why it's 58 pages so for my purposes this report did not have to be 58 pages um i could have gone away gotten away easily with half as much as was in here uh just because i'm so familiar with that boat not that actual not that actual boat but uh that style of boat and that vintage of sea ray and sea rays in general um, like I said, I knew, I knew what to look for or what I wanted to be looked at specifically. And a lot of stuff is in there that is probably more so for somebody who is not as familiar with boats in general or that boat in particular, that model or that line of boat, that vintage of boat of Sea Rays. Um, so that would be super helpful for somebody who's not bought a Sea Ray or not bought that model and does not have as much information. So again, over the top, Brian, um, thank you for that. It's most appreciated, especially given the fact that we weren't there. I had asked Brian <laughs> right from the get go. I said, listen, if I have to pay extra, I will help, help happily do it, but please send me lots and lots of photos. So he ended up sending me over 300 photos of that boat, 300 photos. It was awesome. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I was really appreciative of that. And yes, I've looked at every one of those photos over and over and over and over again because we're so excited. I'm so excited about getting the boat. So yes, that was very beneficial, very helpful. So what did he find in the report that, that was uh, most interesting for me? Now, given the fact that, like I say, we are familiar with those boats and I know where the bad, the bad points are on the sea rays. And the biggest thing that I have found is not in the construction, not in the finish, not in the workmanship, but sea ray cheaped out on one thing. And I saw, I've seen this in the last three boats. The portholes, the side windows on this boat has six of them, as well as the hatches, the deck hatches. From the factory, all they did was employ a very thin, cheap, two-way tape type of foam gasket to keep the weather out, keep the water out of the hull. And um, I've seen them more than once fail, where I've had to go in and replace them and repair them. Again, fully expected that that would be potentially problems, issues, but was surprised to find out through Brian's report because he did all the moisture readings and then the soundings all the way around. So moisture readings, for those of you who are uninitiated, um, a good a surveyor will have um, a moisture content reading gauge that will he'll put on all over the boat, especially anywhere where there's potential for water intrusion through the deck or through the hull, like all around portholes. And we'll find out what the reading is and hopefully everything is within that tolerant zone of percentage of moisture. Now the only three spots that he had pointed out where there was elevated moisture readings was uh, right at the bow of the boat, right on the top of the deck where the, uh, where the anchor road is and where the anchor roller is located because there's a million <laughs> holes in the top of the deck where they screwed the uh, anchor roller to, the foot pedals for the windlass, the windlass itself. And so if, any, if there's gonna be anywhere where water is gonna intrude into the deck, that's it so yeah so what i anticipate doing is uh probably not this season but probably in the off season when the boat is hauled out i hate to say that because we haven't even got the boat yet but when the boat's hauled out and put under shrink wrap i'm going to take out all those components on the at the bow of the boat and let everything dry out just see what it's look looking like and when it comes time to put that stuff back together i will seal it correctly and properly and well and of course i will take you guys along uh for that ride too when i do that yeah, so that was the first area. The second one was at the forward hatch, which is right over the V berth. And again, like I said, there's that, that cheap foam gasket that's all around there. And I have taken those out on all the boats that we've had in the past because eventually <laughs> we're going to get water. And I know it for a fact. So just by, by default, I pull those out, seal them, clean them up, seal them uh, really, really well. There is a video on my channel. If I find it, I'll leave a link. If not, look at my uh, how to boat repairs and upgrades playlist and you'll see how I did that. And of course, I'm going to do that again on this boat. I'm going to take out all four because there's that one that is showing higher moisture readings at the bow of the boat. And then there's uh, three, two in the main cabin and one in the uh, in the head. So I'm going to be pulling those ones, all four of them out, clean them up 
checking if I can see any moisture in the hull or sorry in the deck and then resealing and putting back together a nice nice night when we had our 400 uh, sedan bridge and we were on holidays <laughs> that forward hatch leaked literally it was raining overnight and that was right over the bed and it was drip 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 so the next day ripped it all out we were many miles from home but i always travel with everything that i need for these emergencies and i did the repairs right then and there yeah so i know that that is um it's 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 a weak link in the whole manufacturing process of those vintage sea ray boats uh, so going in with that, I know that that's something that I have to address and I'm perfectly fine with that. Now, the last area that showed elevated moisture readings is actually on, uh, not at the transom, but on the deck where you walk through the transom door going into the boat, into the cockpit. So that's a horizontal servant. I don't know how moisture could be getting in there other than the fact that there is a big cleat along the side of that's the port side aft part of the boat and there is a big giant eight inch cleat there so there's four holes where they bolted through bolted it uh, to the hull so that's the only thing that I'm thinking where moisture could have gotten in water infiltration could have happened because that's an odd spot and I've never seen that on a past boat but that was higher than hope for readings um, but he did his little doop, 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 with his little boop, 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 hammer and suggested that there is no delamination. There's not a lot of water in there. It's just higher elevation of water moisture in there. So again, something I'm going to play with, uh, during the off season, uh, transom showed dry, which is good because this boat is a, uh, it's a cord hull. So I'm going to be doing a standalone video on that, talking all about cord hulls this boat is uh it's got a solid bottom solid fiberglass but the the sides of the hull and the deck uh, there's a balsa core in there and like i say i am going to give a full uh full video and explain what that all means i even have a piece of oh it's up here somewhere it's it, it's up there on the shelf and i'm gonna i have a i have a piece that i actually drilled out of our 400 and explain that all to you and what that means the good bad and the indifferent of that whole uh, construction process so given the fact that this uh, the hull sides and the transom i think the transom on this boat is not balsa core i think it's um, plywood but again there's lots of holes into the back of all transoms and all boats lots of potential for water infiltration and the uh Everything showed really dry, which is fantastic, even up in the lazarette, which is that little compartment where you store stuff in the back of the boat. Um, the stringers, the hull itself, all inside the engine compartment was dry. The only notes that he made was that there's, um, uh, it was dirtier than he was hoping to see under the engines, which again, I fully expected that, and I fully expect to, and I'm looking forward to doing all that fine detail cleaning overall the engine compartment from the photos that i've seen it's clean and like i said in my last video it the boat is a dirty clean or at least it was because we've actually been having some detailing work done down there but that's a video for another day um so it is clean but with like grime on it you know what i'm saying so i am looking i'm really really looking forward to that you can look at my how i did a boat repairs and, and upgrades playlist and you'll see me cleaning the bilge of our last boat so that's something I'm looking forward to. And like I say, I'm very, very happy that it was dry. Um, he said the boat did need a good thorough cleaning. So that has already been taken care of from what I understand. And I will be seeing that in person shortly. And I'll let you know. And eventually give you guys a full tour of the inside of the boat. Uh, the other thing, see I have my sticky notes here. Oh yeah, the shower sump, really dirty. And it looks kind of gross in the photos that he sent me. But... Uh, to the defense of the sellers, um, that is something that you have to stay right on top of. We had in our last boat and the prior boat, the shower sump is the area where if you have a shower, and even if you don't, if you have air conditioning, or sorry, if you use a shower and if you don't, there's still the air conditioning condensate lines that run in there. And this particular boat has two air conditioners. So the condensate lines run in there all the time. Um, and because it's such a low point on the inside of the boat it has to be pumped out there's a little uh float valve that will operate the pump 
and send it out. Now the problem is if any organic matter goes in there because those floats will go like so water level comes up, float goes goes down, but there's always a little bit of water on the sorry. There's always a little bit of water on the bottom of that thing. And if it just sits and if there's any organic material in there, even soap scum, if you use the shower regularly, that soap scum, even though soap is clean, it gets dirty and it's kind of uck and whatever else goes down there and it, it'll just grow. Uh, we had in our 400 sedan bridge, uh, everything ran into the shump, uh, sour shower sump. And if there was organic material like food from the kitchen sink and I ended up changing that again I'm just gonna to refer to a future video when I'm talking about uh, uh, balsa cord hulls and all that I learned through that process um, anchor girl got to the point and she was doing it on the last boat too she would clean that every week that's something you have to do it if you're using a lot a lot of stuff is going down there it will stink especially in the summer if you don't have the air conditioner running all the time or the windows open or a hatch or whatever that will just sit and go mm, all week long. If nobody's there, you step on the boat and you hear the bump come on because you rock it a little bit. Oh man, it, sometimes it smells like the toilet's flushing. So Anchor Girl is super on top of that. She cleans it with a little tiny bit of bleach and lots and lots and lots of fresh water and no issues. So what I think has happened there is that that, has, um, that effort has not been put forward to that probably maybe from the last last season or at the end of last season the the sellers didn't have a chance i don't care i'm not judging anybody here i'm just saying but so that is going to be super duper cleaned i've gone too far on that so that's what he mentioned not a problem we'll take care of that uh what else um ice maker looks dirty but not worried about it because that ice maker is going to be finding a new home in a landfill site somewhere because we're going to be replacing that with a uh, AC DC fridge. You know why? <laughs> Corona light. Yeah. So again, that's going to be a video for down the road. So look forward to that because that's going to be a bit of a project. Yeah. So one more thing that he mentioned was that the the fridge, at the galley fridge. He says the freezer was getting nice and chilled. He ran it for half an hour, forty five minutes, whatever it was. And he said, so it was getting nice and cool. He says, but the fridge portion didn't seem to be cooling down as much as he had liked. So what I think is going on there is uh, for any of you who know how refrigeration works, cold drops. So in those fridges, they have like a free, uh, fridge freezer. Not really. What it is, is the cooling element at the very top. Uh, when that fires up, the coal drops, right? So it's encased in the in the freezer part, but that coal will still find it's down to the fridge side of it. Um, but if that gets iced up and you don't de-ice it or defrost it, there's the word I'm looking for. If you don't defrost it regularly, that's not going to run as efficiently. And the other big thing, again, 24-year-old boat, there is a, uh, a cooling fan down in the bowels of that fridge and the only way to get at it effectively is to remove the fridge and get at the back side uh, we have this again on our 400 sedan bridge there was an ice maker at the back which i didn't replace it was an ice maker and it just it was getting it wasn't working it was getting the the blah blah not going as much so i got very frustrated on one particular saturday afternoon and i pulled that and i was going to go get a new one and i found it was full of dust and dog hair the prior owners to our tenure on that boat they had a dog and so that all got stuck back there and it was just like <clears throat> around the motor and everything that that refrigeration system needs to work and i cleaned it super super good put it back in plugged in turned on boom bob's your uncle fanny's your aunt <laughs> and it worked fine so i think that is what is a lot of going on in this fridge so and it gave me a good opportunity to clean everything super duper good. It's not nothing more fun than when you take something out and you look behind you and say, I'm glad I took this out, especially on the boat, because it needs a good cleaning. So another thing that Brian mentioned to me, and he let me know this before he even wrote up the report, uh, I just want to say again, fantastic communication with him. And then I am definitely leaving a link down in the description. And if you want a survey, in that Ohio, probably up the Michigan area, I don't know, maybe over Pennsylvania. I don't know, you have to get in touch with them. Super duper. I actually found Brian 
doing a Google search and he had at that time 101 um, five star reviews. They were all five star, like right across. And I started reading that's like, nah, this is phony. And I was reading reviews and his replies like, yeah, these are legitimate reviews. They seem to be to me. So anyway, so I contact him and like I say, super fantastic service could not have asked for anymore. So like I said, uh, Brian was communicating with me uh, throughout the process. And one of the things that he did make note of was that the starboard engine forward part, <laughs> there was some oil drippages coming down and it was on the uh, ignition wires. And I said to myself, Sop, I think I know what that is. And even though I'm not there because our prior boat, our 330 Sundancer had the same um, 7.4 Mercruiser or blue water or engines and the 400 before that had the same engines. And there is a remote oil filter up there. So from the factory, though, remember the, their GM blocks, their 454, their 454 GMs, the oil filters at the bottom. So what they do for the marine thing, because it's hard to get at the filter in the bottom. Uh, so they take just two lines that run off to a bracket at the top of the engine and the filters there. It just makes it so much easier when you're doing your oil change to swap out that filter. But those uh, lines, they have compression fittings on them. And given the vintage of the boat, they tend to crack and break and start to leak. And worst case scenario, they'll blow out. I've never seen that, but I'm sure it has happened. So we had the same issue in the last boat and had those lines replaced. And so the follow up to Brian's survey was finding a marine mechanic to go look at the boat. So the marine mechanic um, um, concurred with me that that was the issue. So they replaced those lines. Um, that was a mechanical issue that went back to the seller and the seller was made aware of it. But, you know, it was kind of like a, this was something that had to be overcome. So they agreed to have the mechanic do those repairs as well as he replaced uh, the water circulating pumps on both engines. He suggested that they were leaking, had been leaking or whatever. So they should be replaced. replaced. Uh, so the sellers agreed to pay for those repairs and he did that. So while the mechanic was going to be there anyways, I had him on my behalf do both a compression test on both the engines as well as confirm the engine hours. And the reason was because the engine or sorry, the tax that are showing the analog gauges of how many engine hours they were way up. One I think is showing 500 hours and the other one like 424 or something. And I have seen disparity of, you know, 30, 35 hours between engines simply because some guys are cheap and they want to try and save gas money by running only on, on only one engine. It doesn't work. But anyway, so um, I had him, uh, what a mechanic will do is called, it's, it's a scan of the ECMs, the electronic control modules. I think it is like the brains of the, of the motors. Now, as long as they haven't been replaced, or fooled with because you can flash them and you can erase them but um, I'm just gonna go with the fact that these are original and so what he came up with was more notes uh, port engine 610.5 hours and starboard 615.2 so that is five hours less than five hours disparity between those two engines and 610 hours I'm very happy with and actually I am more happy with the fact that those engines have 600 hours runtime on them as opposed to 400 hours I probably said it to you in the past I would and I told this to anchor girl I would I would buy a boat that has 1500 hours over a boat that has rebuilt engines or replaced engines because I don't, I wouldn't trust that the engines, if they were rebuilt, they were completely rebuilt, fully rebuilt, because what's a rebuilt engine? And I, I brought this up with people who have been trying to sell me a boat. Like, does that mean they pulled the heads? Did they do like a full, pull the engines out of the boat, rebuild them on, in the shop on the on the, on the the bench? Or what is it? Oh, I don't know. I was told it was rebuilt. Yeah, well, whatever. That doesn't fly with me. And if they have to replace the engines, completely what happened what transpired that caused those engines to be replaced so best case scenario an engine has to be replaced because somebody didn't winterize them properly and the blocks cracked but if you're blowing up your engine 
what does that say about the transmission and all the other components on the rebuild that's going to go back on those engines anyways that just doesn't hold well for me so like i say i would rather buy a boat with high engines and high engine hours rather than rebuilt engines uh, but this at 600 hours that makes me very very happy because as i mentioned that and to you in the last video anchor girl keeps telling me that this is going to be our last boat so we're going to be putting a lot of hours on that uh, on that beauty over the coming years starting this year so 600 hours is good i i'm happy with that now the other thing was compression test um all the uh 16 cylinders were all within 10 percent of each other however one was showing lower by the average of about 15 percent, maybe 18 percent. i can't remember i totaled it up and it's like yeah whatever but i take that with a slight grain of salt the compression numbers were good but again given the fact that this is a you know cold motors ideally the engine should be run up to temp ahead of time um, but this was done in a storage facility they're all good and that one that is a little bit lower i i uh, anchor goes says well why would that one be off so much i said who knows maybe a dirty valve seat i don't know <laughs> so and i'm not gonna worry about it i'm happy that they're all good ish and once that boat goes in the water and once we're using it you know me i know where those throttles are and just blow all the crud out so i think that's going to help tremendously and uh, that's all i'm going to say about that and i'm not going to worry about it i'm very happy let's put it this way mechanically i'm very happy with it oh there's one other item that the sellers agreed to take care of and that was a fitting for the trim tabs on the uh, port side whatever and it was just that little angled 90 degree fitting that came through it was leaking and by my eye from what the photo uh, the survey sent me i'm going to suggest that that had been leaking for a long time just nobody knows it so that's been repaired okay lastly if you are looking to buy a boat yourself and you are not super knowledgeable about boats do not expect that a survey even if it's 500 pages long is going to be ultra exhaustive and this goes back to engine hours on a boat you can buy a boat with 200 hours or 2000 hours and that does not necessarily mean it's going to be a problem free boat because beyond the engines themselves like i said there's transmission uh generator if so equipped air conditioning heat if so equipped uh all the electrical stuff inside battery charger yes i got a new one already on order i'm swapping that out um vacuum flush the toilet system all the pipes the water system all the other components beyond the engines again if they're 200 hours or 2000 hours if the boat's two years old 20 years 30 40 50 years old there's all these extra all these other components doors operating properly hatch is not necessarily leaking or they are or whatever windows open and closing doors open and closing lights working inside the boat switches operating cabinets opening there are so many little annoyances potential annoyances on a boat that like say a surveyor will probably not be able to comprehensively say yay or nay good or bad or indifferent on a lot of these components because remember the surveyors on the boat for this little bit of time it's a very small window of opportunity and if you're gonna have problems and you will guarantee on every boat those problems are going to crop up i shouldn't say problems or issues maintenance issues things just breaking going bluey in the night which has happened to us and it's well whatever you got to fix it right then and there or not or don't use that component so like i say don't expect that a survey good or bad glowing or terrible is going to write the whole story same thing with the mechanical mechanical mechanic's going to look at the boat right then and there and in that snapshot in time he's going to say this looks good or that needs attention that's fine but things are going to go wrong down the road down the waterways and also the other thing that um uh, the third and final component for our purchase which is absolutely an everybody should insist upon this you'd be crazy if you don't is doing a sea trial on the boat and have the contract written up so far 
that this uh, a C trial is going to be integral to the final closing of the deal. This boat is bought and paid for in full. However, as part of the contract, a certain portion of the funds have been held back in escrow until such time as that we have a satisfactory uh, C trial because with that boat sitting in that indoor storage, we can't run the generator, we can't run uh, the air conditioning system because that needs water to go through it. We can't run the engines, obviously. Um, yeah, so we can't ch check the transmissions shifting in and out of gear, throttle, so on and so forth. So like I say, I know what to look for. I know to listen to those bumps or whatever. So the final, final part of the final closing of this deal is uh, a sea trial, which means the boat gets launched, put in the water, we take it out for a drive. And when I say we, it's going to be me and the broker. I asked if the seller's going to be there and he said no, because they just don't do that. I don't care one way or the other. So um, we're going to go, we'll do the sea trial. I'm not anticipating any problems or issues, uh, but we, we won't know until such time. Until the boat is in the water and wet and everything's running and fired up, then we'll know we'll take it from there. And if there's something that has to be addressed, we'll take it from there. Yeah, so that's it. That is <laughs> part again of how we bought a boat sight unseen. If you are considering buying a boat, especially in this market where not only necessarily this market, but this time of year, it's winter where we are. There's a ton of snow. We had a, a heck of a storm blow through again here today. So, you know, putting a boat in the water and doing a sea trial is just not realistic at this time. So one would have to buy a boat on a little bit of faith that, you know, that the seller will work with you if you're going to buy a boat now and wait for a sea trial in the spring as well. If you have a good surveyor and a good, um, a broker that you think you can work with and hopefully trust I don't think this would be a big deal I'm gonna go back to the last video we have all confidence in our our, our ability to make a purchase an informed uh, purchase simply because we know the boats we've been doing this for probably 25 years we don't know everything there's no boat boats but I have had my hands dirty many times is it go back to that playlist and you'll see me literally working in shit changing uh, all those things that i mentioned vacuum flush system changing um, uh, holding tank all that stuff working on the air conditioning system down on the bilge cleaning the bilge doing um uh, tune-ups mechanical work changing starters changing alternators belts plugs swim platform that was a massive job right there i encourage you to look at that playlist like i say i don't know everything i am not a mechanic i have no formal training in any of this it's all experience and my experience is roll up the sleeves learn by do dive in i do not have a problem with that and i feel more confident on any boat that we potentially buy or the boats that we own i have to know the systems just for my own peace of mind I love to climb down the engine room and tinker. Yes, I come up with a lot of new curse words a lot of times when I'm working on these projects, but to me, I, I, I couldn't vote any other way. So we're confident with that. If you're less informed and you don't necessarily have the experience, find a good surveyor, somebody who comes highly recommended and not only by your friends or the guy that's selling you that boat, go to Google, do look at reviews. I do that for everything boat related. Um, our uh, broker, again, super highly recommended. Look at that last uh, video and that talks about our experience with uh, with Catawba Yacht Sales. So yeah, that's that. I'm gonna leave links to Brian and his, as well as uh, Catawba Yacht Sales down in the description if you wanna contact these guys directly yourself or just see what they're all about, look at their website. And yeah, take it from there. And if you do contact them, tell them the Boogaboo crew sent you a full thumbs up recommendation for those guys. All right, so that's it. I'm gonna leave it at that. Like I say, this is our fourth uh, 
This is my fourth in the series of how we're buying the boat sight unseen. And coming up is going to be a few other things, including what we intend to do. <laughs> uh, all the upgrades and the list. It's not 58 pages, but it's getting up there. Looking forward to all these new projects on the boat. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm gone. Bye. Any questions, comments, whatever, leave them down in the uh, comment section. And we will see you in the next one. Cheers.